don't think we old people should do this. Christine laughed at Henry for following the youngster's trend. So what? If we are older than them, we can still live like we're 18 years old and be in love once again. Then I can repay you all the time we've lost. Henry felt like he was 18 years old once again ever since he started living with Christine. The power of love made him energetic yet again. All right, I'll play with you then. Both of them left the castle for a walk in the rose garden. Henry plucked a rose and put it behind Christine's ear. Pretty, you're beautiful. They then noticed a car coming from outside, and Christine recognized it. That's Connor's car, right? Yep, looks like it. They waited for the car to stop near them. Alice was the first to jump out of the vehicle. Grandpa, Grandma, Alice shouted. There's my little granddaughter. Christine smiled as she bent down to hug Alice. Alice ran into her grandmother's arms and kissed her on the cheeks. She noticed the rose behind Christine's ear and complimented. Grandma is both pretty and fragrant today. What a sweet mouth. Christine smiled as she touched the little girl's nose. Megan and Connor got down from the car. Are you taking a walk? Yes, the weather's perfect today. I have to exercise as much as I can, Christine explained. Megan realized that her mother had gotten better both physically and mentally. She even noticed that Christine had gained some weight. Connor also came to greet the old couple. Henry noticed that Connor was carrying a cage with three puppies in it. You bought a few puppies? Yep, they're for Alice. These are my new friends, Alice smiled. But we might have to trouble the both of you to take care of them until Megan gives birth, Connor explained. Sure, why not? This place is huge anyways, and the air is good too, Henry said. Come on, Alice. Do you want me to give you a piggyback ride? Yes. Henry bent down, and Alice jumped onto his back. Let's go. Yay. Mom, let's go too, Megan said as she pulled Christine towards the castle while Connor followed them with the cage in his hand. How's antenatal care? Christine asked. Everything's going smoothly, don't worry. Okay. I can't wait to meet them. I've even made some clothes for them. I'll show them to you later. Don't stress yourself too much, Mom. You should use your spare time with Dad more, Megan said, hoping that her mother could lead a comfortable life. Connor had already prepared everything for the unborn babies. He got everything in pairs, even their beds. They went back to the castle, and Henry asked his servants to prepare them lunch. Connor let the puppies out so that Alice could play with them. He talked with Henry in the living room, while Megan and Christine went to Christine's room. Christine showed her the clothes she had made, and Megan was amazed by how well made they were. Mom, these are really cute. You're really good at this. I just followed some instructions online. But it's really well made. You even made them shoes. Megan set a pair of blue shoes in her palm. They were only the size of her palm, so they looked adorable. Your grandma used to be really good at this, Christine sighed. My only regret was not being able to make some for you. At least you can make them for your grandchildren. You'll be very busy once they're born. You're right, Christine nodded. Hey, Megan, do you know how to trim hair? Can you help me? I can, but are you sure you want to trim it? Is Dad okay with it? Megan knew how much her father treasured every part of her mother, even if it was just a strand of hair. Yes, I've already told him, and he's okay with it, too. Okay, then. I'll go find a pair of scissors. Megan put the clothes down and went to get herself a pair of scissors. They sat in front of the mirror as Megan began to cut Christine's hair. How long do you want your hair to reach? Shoulder length. She had the same hair length when she was deeply in love with Henry in the past. Okay, leave it to me. Megan smiled and stared. When she noticed that her mother had a few strands of white hair, she couldn't help but feel a little saddened by it. It's done, what do you think? Megan asked after she finished cutting Christine's hair. Christine looked at herself in the mirror and smiled. It's perfect, just what I wanted. You're just as good as the stylist out there. Do you want to keep your hair trimmed? Megan asked. No, throw it away. 
Those are a part of the past and I want to forget it. Trimming her hair off meant leaving all her past behind for Christine. It signified a fresh start for her. Okay, Megan nodded and helped her mother back to the living room. Let's go and let Dad see your new style. Both of them walked down the stairs, and Megan saw that her father was sitting on the couch. Dad, look. The two men who were talking raised their heads together. Henry couldn't hide his surprise when he saw Christine with a new haircut. Christine had the same haircut 20 years ago. It was as if they had gone back to the past when they first met each other. Christine strolled towards Henry and stopped in front of him. How do I look? Christine asked with a smile. Pretty. Megan helped me cut it. We don't have to hire a stylist anymore. Yes, looks like our daughter is really talented, huh? Stop with the compliments, Dad. Megan laughed. Megan sat down next to Connor on the couch, and Connor moved closer towards her ear. Hey, how about you cut my hair, too? Sure, maybe I'll give you a buzz cut. Megan then laughed at her own joke when she thought of how Connor would look with the buzz cut. Alice came back with three puppies and saw that her mother was laughing really hard. Mommy, what are you laughing at? I'm thinking about how your daddy would look if he had a buzz cut. It would be hilarious, Megan explained as she continued to laugh. Alice stared at her father for a while and said, Daddy would still be the most handsome person, even without hair. And her words made the adults laugh happily. Connor pulled his daughter into his arms and kissed her cheek. That's my girl. Connor and his family left after having their lunch at the castle. On their way back, Megan got a call from Rose asking if she was free. Megan asked for the address Rose wanted to meet at and asked Connor to drive her there. She then realized it was a wedding dress store when they arrived. Rose was waiting for Megan outside the store. Megan then asked Connor to take Alice back home. What are we doing here? Megan asked Rose. I need you to help me pick a dress. I'm getting engaged next month. What? Engaged? To whom? The son of my father's friend. Rose did not really know her to be fiancé well. The engagement had been decided on by the adults a long time ago. Can you accept this? Megan asked. I can't do anything. Even if I can. Rose had wholly given up on Toby. That was why she had accepted her father's engagement proposal. But you really have to think this through. This is one of the biggest moments in your life, you know? I know, but I've already given my consent, and I can't take back my words easily. In Rose's eyes, she thought that she could never obtain happiness. Even if she were to decline the proposal, another would just come knocking on her door. Rick's marriage had also been arranged, and they got along well. Rose could only rely on her luck to get a good husband. Let's go in. I need you to help me choose a dress, Rose said. Since Megan couldn't think of any way to persuade Rose, she decided to go in with her first. After selecting the dress, Rose bought Megan some coffee. While they were talking, Megan was pondering whether she should tell Rose the truth about her pretending to be Toby. Megan still hoped that Rose could be together with Toby. After giving it a lot of thought, Megan decided to tell her the truth. Rose, I have to tell you something, but I'm afraid you might hate me after. What's that? Do you still remember how you first met Toby? Yes. Rose was stunned as Megan suddenly brought Toby up. I accidentally hit his car. That's the secret I wanted to tell you. That wasn't his car, but it was mine. What do you mean? What I mean is that the Toby you met that time wasn't the Toby you know now, Megan said apologetically while holding Rose's hands. That was me in disguise. I'm really sorry. I should have told you about it sooner, but I never thought that it would only make things worse. Rose couldn't close her mouth after learning the truth. She tried to recall the Toby from when she'd first met him and compare him to the Toby she knew now. It wasn't hard to tell the difference. The first Toby was kind to her, and they were like best friends, while the second Toby treated her like a stranger. It wasn't because Toby had a change of attitude towards her, but because she thought of Megan as Toby. 
It meant that the person that Rose had actually fallen in love with at first was Megan. Rose stared at Megan, still unable to make out how she could disguise herself as Toby. I'm really sorry. I know I might lose you as my best friend after telling you this, but I can't sit still if I don't tell you. Megan apologized, deciding that she would not do something similar again in the future. It's not your fault, is it? Rose sighed. If that's the case, then Toby and I have nothing more to say. In the end, he's just another stranger, and we are still best friends. Thank you for understanding. Megan looked at Rose as she sighed in her head. She really wished that such a pure and kind girl could be one of her family. After talking for a long time, Rose drove Megan back to the manor. Megan did invite Rose into her house, but Rose declined, saying that she would visit another day. On her way back, Rose received a call. A man's voice, which was cold and unemotional, sounded on the other side of the phone. It was Rose's fiancé, Troy. Troy said that he wanted to meet with Rose. Even though Rose had no idea what Troy wanted to talk about, she drove straight to the location given by him. Rose walked into the bar. It was not as crowded and noisy as Rose had expected, a bar that only most prestigious people could enter. She told Troy's name to the server and she was guided to a private room. Rose had her head down the whole time and did not notice the two people standing on the second floor. Woody noticed that Rose had just walked through the front door. He remembered her because Megan had introduced him to her during Megan's parents' wedding. Hey, isn't that Miss Rose? Woody said to Toby. Toby looked at where Woody was pointing and also saw Rose in an elegant green one piece. Why is she here? Did you invite her? Woody asked, thinking that Toby was the one who had invited her. No. Toby shook his head. He had no idea why Rose was at the bar either. Should we go say hello? There's no need for that. Toby believed that he should mind his own business. Woody couldn't help but shake his head. He thought that if Toby remained as he was, he would never get married. If neither party was going to make the first move, nothing would happen. Rose walked into the private room and met with Troy. The man sat on the couch with his legs folded. It was clear that he was an arrogant man from the way he acted and looked. That man was the president of the Stone Group, a man who could do anything he wanted in California's business circle. He was handsome, but he wasn't Rose's type. Mr. Troy, did you call me here? Troy raised his head when he heard Rose's voice. Please have a seat. Troy pointed at the empty seat. Rose walked with her back straight and sat down opposite of Troy. Troy scanned Rose from top to bottom and said, I have something to clarify. I accept the engagement proposal, not because I like you. Troy would not have agreed to it if not for the elderly and his family lying in their deathbeds and wanting to see him have a family. I know. So even if we were to be engaged, you would have no right to stop me from doing anything. It was clear that Troy was a man who always had his way. Anything else? Rose asked, having already prepared for what Troy would say. Her voice was calm and cold, as if she were not a person that was about to be engaged. Even if I say that we still have to act like a happy family in front of the elders, okay? I get it. Is that all? That's all, Troy concluded. Can I take my leave then? Rose asked. Yes. Rose left the room immediately. She took a deep breath. Once she was outside, as her broken heart was broken even more. At that time, she had already accepted the fact that her future had nothing to do with happiness anymore. This must be my fate, Rose sighed. When Rose was leaving, she bumped into a man's shoulder. What the hell is wrong with you? Can't you see? The man scolded, but stopped. His eyes lit up when he saw the person who had bumped into him was a pretty lady. I'm sorry. Rose apologized and tried to leave, but the man grabbed her arm. Do you think you can leave just by saying sorry? I'll let you go if you have a few glasses with me, the man said, and dragged Rose into another private room. There was no way Rose could free herself from the man's sturdy grip. She tried to, but she was dragged into the room in the end. Woody and Toby both saw Rose being brought into the room. Hey, isn't that Miss Rose? And who's that man? Why is he dragging her? Woody asked. Toby did not know the answer. He thought Rose was at the bar looking for someone. 
and now seeing that Rose was dragged into the room, he thought that the man was one of her friends. He decided that he should not mingle with her business. Are you sure you don't want me to take a look? Woody asked. What's there to look at? Toby asked. He was unusually calm. Woody couldn't believe his own ears. He really wanted to pry open Toby's head and see for himself what was inside his brain. He wondered if he could find a hint of compassion towards women in his head. Rose was thrown onto the couch. She tried to get up but was pushed back down by the man with three glasses of alcohol in front of her. I'll let you leave if you drink all three glasses here. I can't drink. Rose knew that the man was up to something. His eyes were giving it all away. Making her drink was just an excuse. She scanned the room and noticed other guards were standing by and they were all men. She realized that she had no chance of escaping if the man wouldn't let her go. Rose tried to take her phone out while striking up a conversation with the man, but as soon as she got her phone out, the man snatched it away from her. What? Trying to call the police? It's useless, you know. I literally own the police around here, the man said. Do you know who I am? Rose asked, trying her best to keep herself calm. Oh, why don't you tell me? I'm the Secretary of State's daughter. My father will never let you go if you try to harm me. The Secretary of State? You're his daughter? Oh, this must be my lucky day. My fiancé Troy is in this bar right now. He will never let you go if I'm hurt, Rose warned. Troy, we've never heard of him getting engaged to anyone. Well, it's not like it matters. You will drink all three glasses even if we have to force you to do it. The man waved his hand, and two of his guards grabbed Rose by her arms and forced the drinks down her throat. No, stop. Rose struggled, but was no match for the two guards. They forced her to drink so much that the excess wine wet her dress. The dress turned almost transparent under the liquid, and her perfect body shape could be seen. The man was glad to see that the wine which was drugged had been drunk by Rose. He knew that there was no way that the lady could keep her calm after taking the drug. Rose could feel her body heating up and her head was spinning. There, I've drunk them. Can I go now? Rose tried to get up only to fall back down because of her dizziness. The wine was stronger than Rose had thought. Rose was never able to take in alcohol from the beginning. Her body would itch whenever she drank alcohol. She felt terrible and wanted to puke but couldn't do so. Her mind was going blank. What a lucky day for me, the man laughed when he realized the drug was taking effect. Don't worry, I'll treat you really well. The man took off his jacket and started to touch Rose's leg. Toby finished his last glass and got up. Let's go, Toby said to Woody. Aren't you going to take a look? Woody asked as he chased after Toby. What happens if Miss Rose is in trouble? I still think that guy looks shady. Even if you don't do it for yourself, do it for Megan. Toby stopped and thought about it. He persuaded himself that he was doing it for Megan's sake and turned back, walking towards the private room. The guards that were standing outside the room noticed the two of them and stopped them. What do you want? One of the guards asked. We're looking for someone. A young lady walked into this room just a few minutes ago, right? So what? That's Isaac's woman. You two better leave right now. Upon hearing what the guard had just said, Toby was more unsure of Rose's relationship with the man inside. Toby was worried that they might really be a couple, and it would have been bad if they barged in. Woody saw that Toby was hesitating and decided to help him a little. Just as Toby was about to leave, Woody cooked the door down. The guards tried to stop Woody, but they were all taken down in an instant. What they saw then angered them. A middle-aged man was pushing Rose down on the couch. Most of Rose's dress had been torn apart and she was screaming for help with her remaining consciousness. Even an idiot could understand that the man was trying to force his way with Rose. Seeing the sight, a fire was lit up in Toby's gut, and there was no way he could ignore it. Just as the guards were trying to block them, Toby threw a kick towards one of the guards while Woody tagged along with him in sync, taking out the guards one by one. When the man who was called Isaac by the guards turned around to look, all he saw was two strangers taking his guards down. Who the hell are you two? How dare you ruin my fun? Isaac scolded. Us? We're here to take your life. 
Toby scolded back and punched Isaac in his face, throwing him backwards. Isaac fell and crushed the glass table beneath him, shattering it to pieces. Isaac struggled to get up while he cursed. But before he was up, Woody followed up and kicked Isaac in his gut, sending him flying again. Leave this guy to me. Go and check on Miss Rose, Woody said to Toby. Toby looked at the lady who was on the couch. It seemed to him that she was already drunk as she couldn't speak clearly. Her clothes were wet and part of them were ripped. Miss Rose. Toby lightly tapped Rose's face. He could smell the alcohol coming from her, but he had no idea how much she had drink to become that drunk. No, Rose let out a low moan. It was clear that Rose was being mistreated by Isaac. Toby couldn't care less about what relationship the two of them had. He knew that he had to save Rose. Toby took off his jacket and put it on Rose. He took her back and picked her up from the couch. Woody was also finishing with Isaac. With one last kick, Isaac fell unconscious. What should we do? Should we take her to your place first? Woody asked, thinking that it would be the best time for Toby to be alone with Rose. What the hell are you talking about? We're taking her home. Woody was dumbfounded, thinking that Toby would be lucky if he ever got married. Rose opened her eyes slightly while they were on their way to the residence due to the shaking of the car. Even though she couldn't see who it was, she could feel that someone was carrying her. The aroma of the man, the male hormone, was exciting her nerves. Her heart was beating faster than usual, and it felt like she was suffocating. She felt an urge that she had never felt before. She needed something desperately. Rose suddenly hugged Toby, and it stunned him. He had no idea what to do, and he was panicking. The worst part was that the lady lifted her head up to try and kiss him. He quickly turned his head away to avoid the kiss. Woody, hurry up. I can't hold it in any longer. Woody looked at them in the rearview mirror and could see that even though Rose was only half awake, her hands were going up and down over Toby's body. Woody wanted to laugh, but he held it in as a thought of something. I think she's drugged, Woody said. What? Toby had never seen anyone being drugged before and had no idea what was happening. You know, the kind of drugs that can make a person go crazy. Do you think she would hug you like this with her personality? Woody explained. Toby knew that Rose was a proud lady, and there was no way that she would be so out of her mind. Woody's explanation could be the only reason. Then what should we do now? Can't you think of something? It was Toby's first time encountering such a troubling situation. He tried to keep Rose's hands locked. What can I do? You're the only one who can help her. Toby knew that Woody meant and did not want to comply. There's no other option. If you don't want to, we can find another man to help her. There was no way Toby would give Rose to another weird man after saving her from one. He'd already realized that the condition of the lady in his arms was getting worse. Her breathing became faster as if she was suffocating. Rose frowned, as if she was in pain. Toby noticed that a lot of red spots were starting to appear on her pale skin. Woody, I think she's also allergic to alcohol. Look at her neck. Then we should go to the hospital, Woody said, unable to see the red spots from the rear view mirror. Woody quickly made a U-turn and drove straight to the military hospital. Toby could go in and out of the hospital freely as the general, and they quickly found a doctor for Rose. Examination showed that Rose was under the effect of a type of love drug, but she was showing symptoms of being intoxicated by alcohol. Most people would not have problems when mixing those two symptoms together, but Rose was another matter. It was a danger to her life. Rose was burdened with a very complex heart problem. She cut out how to keep herself calm and steady all the time. But the after effects from the drug and alcohol made her heart beat faster and shocked her into a heart attack. It would be life-threatening if Rose did not get treated immediately. The doctors managed to save Rose after proceeding with the gastric lavage. While Woody went to take care of Rose's hospital admission, Toby stayed in the room with her. He looked at the lady who was lying on the bed. Her face was as pale as a ghost. 
Toby couldn't imagine how much he would blame himself if Rose were to die because of his ignorance. They were lucky that Woody had noticed her at the bar and persuaded Toby to go take a look at her. All that Toby could do at the moment was wait for Rose to wake up. While he was waiting, he wondered why Rose would take in such a massive amount of alcohol if she knew she were allergic to it. He wondered why she would still go and meet with the middle-aged man. Rose finally woke up around 9 in the morning. The first person she saw was Toby, and she thought she was hallucinating. She closed her eyes and opened them again, only to see Toby still sitting next to her. She couldn't help but widen her eyes to express her surprise. You're finally awake, Toby said. I... Rose started to recall what had happened after she met with the middle-aged man, but she had no recollection of what had happened after she drank the wine. Soon as she arrived, Toby told them everything and Sheldon nodded back to him. Then I'll take my leave now, Toby said, and Sheldon saw them off. Rose, what happened? Why did you consume so much alcohol? Sheldon asked after Toby and Woody had left. I'm fine, don't worry. I met with Troy at a bar and bumped into someone on my way back. That person wouldn't let me leave unless I drank with him. I was forced to drink a few glasses. Luckily, Toby was there. Thank God. It would have been dangerous if they hadn't saved you. Rick could not even imagine if she were to lose her daughter. We really have to thank Toby and his friend. Let's invite them over sometime, Sheldon said. That is a must, Rick agreed. Toby left the hospital after meeting up with Woody. Are you sure you don't want to stay and take care of her? Woody asked, thinking that it was a perfect chance. Her parents are here. Let's go. Toby quickened his pace and walked towards the main door. Hey, tell me the truth. Do you like her or not? Stop it. She's going to get married soon. There's no way things could work out between us. Toby was self-aware that the feeling he had for Rose wasn't something that Woody thought he had. He only regarded her as his friend. And there goes all of Megan's hard work, Woody sighed. Woody still believed that Toby actually liked Rose, but he didn't know it himself. Do you know who she is engaged to? Woody asked. How would I know? I do. She's going to marry Troy. Do you even know what kind of person he is? Woody noticed that Toby was not going to reply, and he continued. That man is a famous businessman in California, but he's also known for being a planter. Rumor has it that he has a ton of girlfriends. Do you think Miss Rose would find happiness if she were married to him? It was as if Woody's words finally made an impact as Toby's heart skipped a beat. Even though Toby suspected that Rose would not be able to obtain happiness by marrying Troy, that was her own choice and he had no say in it. And even if Rose were not to marry Troy, Toby could not promise her happiness. It was out of his reach because Toby was about to be engaged like Rose. To them, the family's honor was more important than their own happiness. This is not something that we should be worried about, Toby sighed. By the way, shouldn't you be more worried about your girlfriend? Hey, don't try to change the subject. Then what about you? Are you really going to get engaged to Kelly? Toby did not reply to Woody's question and closed the car door. Woody sighed and followed him into the car. Sheldon was asking Rose about the incident in her room. Rose, what did Troy want from you yesterday? He just wanted to talk about the engagement, that's all. See, I told you, that guy is quite the reliable kid, Rick said. We have been friends with his parents for a long time, and we know how good they are. Their son would not fall far from the tree. But I'm still worried that he won't treat Rose well. Sheldon always stood by his daughter's side. He would always listen to what his daughter wanted. But Rose was the one who had agreed to the engagement. That won't happen. Aren't we the same as them, too? We never even meet each other once before the engagement. Look how well we turned out. Don't forget that you also had the rumors of having a lot of mistresses, too. Those were just scandals, Sheldon scolded. That's my point. Being a player was just Troy's act. He's doing it for the public and nothing else. I believe that he will love our Rose like we do. Rick really liked Troy and was stern about having her daughter marry him. 
There was no way Sheldon could argue with Rick's reason, but he always thought that his daughter was much more suited to Toby. He believed that Toby was a better man than Troy. Toby returned back to the base after leaving the hospital. After separating with Toby, Woody decided to go and look for Layla. After making a few calls, Woody learned that Layla was having dinner at Megan's place. After hanging up the call, he drove straight to the manor. He was just in time for dinner. It's always better to be right on time than earlier, Woody laughed when he caught the scent of the food. Megan smiled. You're right. Have a seat. Megan had already saved a seat for him by Layla and set a bowl of chopsticks down. Woody sat readily by Layla and tilted his head to take a glance at her. Layla pretended not to see him and kept playing with Alice. Being completely neglected by his girl, Woody had a chat with Megan and Connor instead. Megan smelt something and said, Second brother, why do you smell like a hospital? Oh my, I did stop by the hospital, but how could you tell? Woody was shocked. I just know. What happened to you? Woody shook his head. It was not me, but Rose. We sent her to the hospital. Hearing his explanation, Megan was confused. What's wrong with Rose? How come you and her? Woody did not want to create any misunderstanding and hurried to explain. No, no, no. Let me tell you, it was not me and her. Woody told them about what had happened in the pub today. Then Megan realized that after their catch-up, Rose had gone to the pub. She was drugged there. Woody and Toby happened to be there and saved her. Hearing that Rose had almost died of alcohol intoxication, Megan was quite worried. I'll check on her tomorrow. So, how did you deal with that Mr. Isaac? Did you punish him? Of course, I punished him well. Good. A person like him deserves a good lesson. When dinner was ready, they went on chatting and eating. After the dinner, Woody and Layla headed home together. This time, Layla did not make any excuses. She was good when he called her to go home. On the following day, Megan and Connor sent Alice to school, then headed to the hospital. Coming to Rose's ward, Megan knocked on the door and entered the room. Rose was there by herself. Rose! Megan came to her and called gently. Megan, Mr. Wilson, what brought you here? Rose turned to see them and tried to get up. Don't get up, stay there. Megan held her from getting up. I heard from my second brother. How are you feeling now? Better? I'm fine, no worries. She was already recovering with the alcohol and drug expelled, but still felt weak and upset in the stomach. Are you alone here? Do your parents know? Yes, my father had a meeting in the blue house this morning, and mother went home to get me some clothes and shook some food. She will be back shortly, Rose explained. I see. Megan stayed with Rose while Connor left to take care of some matters. When he was gone, Megan asked, What happened when I left yesterday? Why did you go to the pub, and how did you get into trouble? I went there to meet Troy. He said he wanted to talk to me. After that, I ran into that man. I did not know him, but he drugged me. Rose felt that it was pure ill luck. She was merely walking when she ran into that guy. Hearing the name Troy, Megan asked, Is that Troy the one you are engaged to? I think I've seen it on the news. Right, that's him. He seems to have bad fame. Are you serious? Megan had checked the internet on Troy's background and found that he was filled with scandals. There's no differences there. Rose wasn't looking forward to a happy ending anymore, especially after learning what Troy really thought of her. Of course there's a huge difference, Megan scolded. You are just going to sacrifice your future if you are married to someone you don't like. Megan did not want Rose to give up on her future when she was still so young. Was what happened to Toby going to give her a huge impact on her? Megan couldn't help but think. I know that. Rose dropped her head. It was clear that she was depressed. Is it because of Toby? Megan then asked. I don't really think he's not interested in you, you know. Look how he cared for you when you were hurt. He even took you to the hospital right away. He's the type of person who wouldn't do something like this if it wasn't someone he really cared about. Rose raised her head and looked at Megan in surprise. It's the truth, Megan continued. 
He had no idea that you even existed when I was pretending to be him. It's normal that he would be shocked when you suddenly appeared in his life. Give him some time, and he might realize that he also wants you. Megan just couldn't see Rose throw her happiness away. How about this? Megan suggested, knowing that she'd moved Rose's heart a little. I'll create a chance for both of you to meet. But before Rose could respond, Rick came in. Oh, Megan, Rick greeted. Auntie. Megan got up and greeted her back. Please sit. Rick set her bag down and filled a bowl with kongji for Rose. Have you eaten yet? Rick asked Megan. I have more if you want some. Thank you, but I had my breakfast before coming here. I see. When Rose was having her breakfast, Rick began to talk to Megan. Right, we still have to thank Toby for helping our Rose on different occasions. My husband and I are thinking of inviting him over for dinner. Bring Connor with you too. Thanks for the invitation, Megan thanked. Megan turned to look at Rose, telling her not to waste the chance through eye contact. Rose didn't say anything in return, but the affection towards Toby that was once dead had been lit again by Megan's words. She thought that if Toby showed that he was actually interested in her, even a little, she would build up the courage to tell her parents to cancel the wedding. Rose left the hospital three days later. A dinner feast was prepared at the residences to celebrate that. Toby, Megan, Connor, and Woody were all invited. Toby felt there was no reason to go, but Woody dragged him all the way to the residence. Everybody was seated, and Toby happened to sit facing Rose. But when Rose looked at him, he turned away deliberately. There was something awkward between them. The luncheon started. Sheldon and his wife tried to thank Toby and Woody with gifts, but the two declined politely. Then the men started drinking while Megan sat chatting with Rick. Women's topics were always about family, husbands, and kids. Rick mentioned, Megan, if you're willing, you are more than welcome to join our society. May I? Megan was surprised. Of course. We have to have you as a member. Thank you. It's my honor. Megan recalled that she had tried to join the society at the beginning in order to figure out if Rick was Lady White Tea. Now she already knew the family well and realized that Rick was definitely not Lady White Tea, but it would do no harm to ask further about her. Ansi, I know people call you Lady Camellia, but have you ever heard of Lady White Tea? I have heard of this name. Many years ago, we had a member called Raven. I heard from her that her sister was called Lady White Tea, but I only have Raven's photo here. I'll show you. Rick pulled out from her pad the files of former Lancia Society members where Raven was recorded. Seeing Raven's photo, Megan found that this woman looked familiar, but on the other hand, she was quite sure that she had never met her before. How could that be possible? Staring at the file, Megan asked further, So, wasn't Raven from the Northland? But it says California here. Right, she was from California. Then do you know where she is now? Sadly, she passed away many years ago, but she has a daughter. I'm sure you are no stranger to her. Who is her daughter? Our superstar, Amelia. Megan was truly shocked. So was Amelia's mother Raven? In that case, was Lady White T. Amelia's aunt? Who would expect that they were so close? Getting to know this, Megan got excited. Luckily, she took care of Amelia when she came to her for help. Now she had found a vital clue. She would definitely go to Amelia to find out who her aunt was. Awesome! Everybody enjoyed the luncheon except for Rose. She kept her head low and talked to no one. Tea was served afterwards. Connor talked to Sheldon while Megan kept chatting with Rick. Auntie, I told my first and second brother about your beautiful garden. They both want to take a look. Rick was flattered. Really? Then I'll have Rose show them around. Sure. Rick called her daughter to accompany the two for a tour in the garden. Rose took a look at Megan, who slightly nodded at her. Then she realized that Megan was trying to help her and Toby. As her mother had asked, she invited the two gentlemen for a tour. Woody dragged Toby to catch up with her. The residence was indeed beautiful. Every inch of the residence showed that it was decorated with care. 
Most of the plants in the garden had been planted by Sheldon himself. There were also a lot of beautiful stones. They had all been collected by Sheldon and were his treasures. Rose guided them through the garden and introduced them to the garden. Toby walked with them and listened to Rose's voice quietly. Her voice was sweet and kind, like water gushing down a stream. Miss Rose, is there a bathroom near here? Woody suddenly asked. There's one by the pavilion over there, Rose said as she pointed at a pavilion. Thank you. Please excuse me, Woody said and ran to the bathroom. Woody did his best to give Toby a chance to be alone with Rose. Toby had no idea that his being alone with Rose was Woody and Megan's plan. With only the two of them left, it began to feel awkward. Let's go over there, Rose said after steadying herself. Okay, Toby replied with a cold expression. Rose could not guess what he was thinking. Mr. Toby, I'm really sorry about last time. Megan already told me everything and I acted abruptly. Rose apologized. No, you don't have to apologize, Toby said, knowing what Rose was referring to. Also, thank you for saving me at the bar. You are very welcome. With just a few exchanges of conversation, Rose realized that Toby seemed to give out a pressuring air around him and it was awkward for her. She could not remember the words that she had thought of saying to Toby beforehand. Are you really going to marry that guy from the Mo family? Toby asked. What? A uh, yes. Rose dropped her head. Her mind was in chaos once she learned that Toby knew of her engagement plan. I hope you can reconsider. You should not gamble your happiness on things like this. I'm not doing it on a whim. What difference is there if the person I like doesn't like me back? Rose said with all her mustard courage while keeping her head down. Her words made the atmosphere around them awkward again. Rose finally broke the silence after walking for a certain distance. I'm just asking as a friend, but what kind of woman does Mr. Toby like? Toby turned to look at Rose's face. He did not hate a pure and gentle person like Rose, but instead, she gave him a sense of quiet and serenity. I don't know. Toby replied, not knowing the answer because he had never really fallen in love with anyone. Then maybe, just maybe, if we were to meet from the beginning, not Megan, but just you, would you fall in love with me? Rose could feel her heart beating really fast when she asked this question. They happened to stop at the same time and stared into each other's eyes. Toby saw in her charming eyes the reflections of himself. He really did not want to hurt this delicate girl, but he could not promise anything either. Therefore, it was better to make it short. He took a deep breath and said, I'm sorry, Miss Clareton. That's not possible. You are great, but I cannot promise anything. Being rejected, Rose felt her heart breaking again. A sharp pain prevailed. She felt sour and lost control of her tears. Why? She had to know the reason. If she was great, why did he keep rejecting her? Why not even try? Because I'm also getting engaged, Toby answered frankly. He did have some feelings for her, but it was not the right time. How bitter it was. What a shock. Hearing that Toby was also getting engaged, Rose felt like she was hit by a bolt. A moment ago, when he had told her to think it through, she thought that he was about to stop her from marrying that man and wanted to be with her. She thought that, if he wanted, she would definitely cancel the engagement for him. However, it turned out to be her own fantasy again. She wanted to ask who he was engaged to, who was the lucky girl that he would marry. But she did not have the courage to ask. She felt like she was being emptied and was stunned. Finishing his words, Toby got ready to leave. Thank you for showing us around, Miss Clareton. I have to go now. And he walked away upon saying so. Rose stood there watching him leave. Her tears fell down again silently. How painful. She could barely breathe. He had refused her once and now again. Rose, you idiot. Now get over it. Toby returned to the villa and found Woody talking with Megan and others. So he did not go to the bathroom. He deliberately left them alone. 
Seeing Toby coming back alone, Megan asked, First brother, how come you got back by yourself? Where is Rose? She's in the garden. Then Toby turned to Sheldon and his wife. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Clareton, for the luncheon. Sorry that I have to leave now. No problem. Feel free to drop by when you have time. They stood up and sent him off. Woody proposed to leave with him, too. With him gone, Megan told Connor, Honey, you stay here with Uncle Ouyang and Auntie. I'll go check on Rose. Okay. Megan went to the garden. She followed the blossoms and eventually found the girl sitting on the ground weeping. It seemed they were indeed not meant for each other. Megan came and patted her on the shoulder. Come on, Rose, don't be so sad. Rose raised her head and wiped the tears. She stood up and came to cuddle Megan. Megan, I've tried my best, but it didn't work out. He never liked me. I see. Rose, at least we tried. There's no more regret. Megan stroked her on her hair and comforted her. If that's the case, I guess he is indeed not your Mr. Right. I know. Rose nodded as she tried to hold back her tears. She knew very well that one should not force the person they love. All she could do was accept reality and wish him a happy life. After having comforted Rose, Megan left with Connor. Sheldon had already given them invitations to Rose's wedding. Megan looked at the invitation and realized that the wedding would be held in seven days. This is really unexpected, Megan sighed. You want to see something more unexpected? Connor asked, handing another invitation to Megan. Another one from who? Open it and you'll see. Megan opened the invitation and realized it was from Toby. He's going to get married? Megan couldn't believe her eyes. How she hoped that the invitation was fake. Is this real? Why haven't I heard about it? Megan expressed. Of course it's real. I just learned about it too. Who's Kelly? Wait. Isn't she the daughter of Clarkson Group's president? Yes. This is frustrating. Why would they even get married? They don't even know each other, Megan scolded, thinking that the marriage between Toby and Kelly would never work out. I still think Toby looks good with Rose. So what if they look good together? People lose to fate a lot of times. Connor urged Megan to give up on them. They had both chosen their paths, and outsiders had no say in them. I get it, but what a waste. Wait, they are getting married on the same date and place? Megan quickly looked at Rose's invitation, and indeed, both Rose and Toby would be marrying two different people at the same date and place. Wait, the same hotel? Yes, fate really works wonderfully. We might have a show that night. Megan sighed as she put the invitations down. She couldn't help but imagine how Rose would feel when she found out about it. Amelia had been staying in a secret apartment, waiting patiently for Megan's message. She finally got a call from Megan, and she jumped with excitement. She quickly got dressed and put on a hood before heading out. They were both going to meet at a western restaurant, and Amelia rushed there. How is it? Is it all settled? When can I meet him? Amelia asked the moment she met up with Megan. I have something to ask you first. Harris is planning to go to the Northern Kingdom in the near future. Do you want to go with him? Megan asked. The reason for Megan's invitation was so that Amelia could help identify Lady White Camellia. She was the best witness. Of course. Thank you so much. You really helped me a lot. Amelia agreed. She couldn't care less what they were going to the Northern Kingdom as long as she could meet with Harris. No problem. Oh, there's another thing I wanted to ask. What's that? I'll do my best to answer you. Does your mother have a sister? Amelia was surprised and asked instead. How did you know? Is she called Lady White Tea? That's right. Amelia had only gotten to know that she had an aunt last time in Long Island. Can you tell me what Lady White Tea is like? Megan pretended not to be excited, but her instinct was telling her that she could get something solid from Amelia. Amelia laughed. She sipped on her tea and said, You know her. You've met her before. What? Megan was stunned. How could she know Lady White Tea? How could they have met? When was that? 
Megan, let me tell you, my aunt is indeed called Lady White Tea, but her real name is Renee, the former Mrs. President. But she is wanted now. Please don't tell anyone else. Hearing the answer, Megan was thrilled. Lady White Tea was Renee. Renee was Lady White Tea? Oh my, what had she missed? She tried to recall Renee's cunning face and what had happened previously, and how Lady White Tea had plotted with Gabriel as well as her relation with Amelia. Amelia was Gabriel's daughter and her mother was Lady White Tea's sister. No wonder they formed an alliance. Lady White Tea was Renee's hidden identity. She did whatever she could to marry her father Henry. No wonder she hated her mother Christine so much. Things started making sense now. They were all related and now Megan had a few further questions. So, if Renee was Lady White Tea, then who was the Queen of the Northland that wore the heiress tear? She could it be another hidden identity of Lady White Tea? And if Renee was Lady White Tea, then where was the child she'd bought now? Megan? Megan, are you alright? Amelia got Megan back from her contemplating. Megan shook her head and told Amelia, Nothing. Finish your breakfast and go now. I'll let you know before departure. Great. When Amelia left, Megan came back to the villa. She was in a good mood because she was finally getting close. Now that she knew Renee was Lady White Tea, as long as she could find her, she would be able to uncover the truth. She believed that she would find her own brother in no time, but Megan would not tell anyone before she got further clues about her brother. She was particularly not telling her parents because she wanted to give them a surprise. She only told Connor, and he was also stunned. So the person they had been searching for had always been around them. They had just failed to recognize her. Knowing that Lady White Tea was Renee, they had a much clearer target now. As long as they could catch her, they would find Megan's brother. On the following weekend, Megan took Alice to the presidential palace to visit Jace. He had almost recovered, but his father's death and what happened in the Northland was a blow to him. He was a loner, and now even more wordless. Alice heard that Jace's room was right there. She let go of her mother and ran to knock at the door. Not getting any response, Alice opened the door and popped her little head inside. Uncle Prince? of the Northland later on. Harris, the teenager, kept looking outside the window until he heard the little girl's voice. When he turned around and saw Alice, his eyes were brimming with vitality again. Uncle Alice Prince asked as she ran towards Jace. Asked as she ran towards Jace. She had been worrying about Jace. She had been worrying about Jace and was praying for him to get better. I'm good, Jace replied as he lowered his head and patted the little girl's head. How are you? No, I'm not good, Alice shook her head. I was worried about you. I even ate one less bowl of rice yesterday because of that. Don't worry, I'm really fine, Jay smiled as he tried to hide his laugh. Then let's go to the garden. My grandpa has a lovely garden at his home. I haven't even played there yet. Alice pulled Jace's hand, trying to drag him out of the gloomy room and into the sunlight. Okay. Jace had not planned to leave. He did not want to meet with anyone, but there was no way he could decline the little girl's offer. The sun outside was bright, so bright that it hurt his eyes slightly. Because he had been hiding inside the dark and gloomy room for too long, the sudden brightness made him dizzy. He waited until he recovered and walked out the gate. Come on, let's play in the garden. The little girl in the blue dress shouted as she ran towards the rose garden. Hey, don't run too fast or you'll fall, Megan shouted as she saw Alice running really fast. Okay. But just as she finished responding to her mother, Alice fell to the ground. Both Megan and Connor saw it and ran towards Alice. But Jace was closer to Alice than them and reached her first. Are you okay? Are you hurt anywhere? Jace offered his hand and pulled Alice up before helping her wipe off the dust on her dress. No, I'm okay, 
Alice shook her head. What do you want to play? How about hide and seek? Alice suggested and ran away. I'll hide first and Uncle Prince has to come find me. You'll have to close your eyes and count to ten, okay? Okay. The teenager proceeded to play with the little girl in the garden. Megan couldn't help but sigh at the lonely and depressed expression Jace was giving. How's the Northern Kingdom? Most of the power has fallen into the Queen's hands. Her identity has been exposed as well, Harris said. Who is she? Megan still remembered that she had only seen the photo of the Queen and her veil from Susan. No one knew that the Queen actually looked like, and it made Megan curious. You might not know her. Here's her picture. Harris handed her the newspaper with the Queen's photo on it. Megan looked at it and couldn't help but voice her surprise. It's her? You know who she is? Yes, she's Raven Amelia's mother. She's also Lady White Camellia's sister. I thought she was already dead. <sighs> How did she become the Northern Kingdom's queen? Seeing the photo of the Queen of the Northland, Megan realized that it was not another identity of Renee, so Raven was still alive. Furthermore, she was about to be throned. Is she Amelia's mother? It was Harris who was surprised this time. Yes, people said she died many years ago. She was actually Gabriel's ex-wife and sister of Lady White Tea. Do you have any idea who Lady White Tea is? No. You don't know the name, but you must know her in person. Lady White Tea is your mother, Renee. If it was not for Megan... Harris would never have found out the other identity of his mother. He was overwhelmed. How could it be? I couldn't believe it either, but it's true. I've been searching for her for a long while, and finally here we are. As long as we can find her, I will be able to get my brother back, so we probably need to ask Raven for her whereabouts. Brother, will you help me then? Harris knew that Megan had a missing twin brother and was willing to help. It's my duty. No worries. I'll figure this out. Renee was a wanted criminal in California now. As the president, he would never harbor her. He did want to know her whereabouts. He could ask the Queen of the Northland later on. Harris knew that he would meet the Queen and his following visit to the Northland, so he asked, Megan, you mentioned you wanted to go to the Northland. Was that why? But are you not going now? Megan had changed her mind. No, I'm not going. As a pregnant woman, I probably would be troublesome for you. I see. You better stay home. Right. I'm not going. But I want you to take someone with you just in case. Who? Amelia. Harris did not know that Megan had been taking care of Amelia. Since they took down Long Island, he had been busy with his state affairs and almost forgot about Amelia. If it was not for Megan, he probably would have never thought about her. Megan explained why she thought it was good to bring Amelia. Brother, I thought the Queen of the Northland was Lady White Tea, but now we know the truth that she is Amelia's mother, so if you bring her here, she might be able to help you out if Raven does you any harm. Harris agreed. Fine, then let's bring her in. They had lunch in the presidential palace. After that, Megan and Alice stayed a little while longer for Jace. Connor came to pick them up around 4 o'clock and they headed home. On their way back, Megan and her daughter sat in the back seat. Thinking of Alice and Jace playing together earlier on, Megan suddenly asked, Sweetheart, Mommy has a question for you. Sure. Do you think Brother Patrick is better or Uncle Prince? Alice had never compared these two boys. Being suddenly asked by her mother, she had to give it some thought. They are both good. The little girl replied while she tilted her head. Then who do you want to marry in the future? Megan asked. Brother Patrick, because I'm his future wife. Alice smiled, knowing the answer all along. Then what about Uncle Prince? What about Uncle Prince? Alice never thought of it. She thought about how he got hurt and how he lost his father. But the little girl thought of a good idea. I know, I can find him a princess, then he won't be lonely anymore. Alice always believed that a prince would be together with a princess in the end, and that they would live happily ever after in a castle. What a good idea. Megan hugged her daughter and kissed her cheek. Mommy, when can we go back to New York? Alice asked. Do you hate California? 
No, but I miss New York, too. Brother Patrick is there, and so is Auntie Orange and Brother Pete. I miss them so much. When can we see them? Alice frowned. But then she thought of something. I know. I have a super daddy. He can build a bridge. Megan laughed and turned to Connor, who was driving. You hear that? She wants you to build a bridge. It's really a good idea, Connor said as he looked at the little girl's face in the rear view mirror. But sadly, we can't build a bridge that long. Why is that? Because of the typhoon. It will destroy the bridge, so it'll be dangerous. Connor explained with a serious tone. Megan couldn't help but praise how smart her husband was. He had given an answer that the little girl could accept. I see. Then I think I should just call them. Mommy, can we call Brother Patrick and Auntie Orange later? I want to talk to them. Of course you can. After they returned to the manor, Megan brought Alice to her room to make the video calls. Connor went to the kitchen to prepare dinner. Alice called the Hannibal family first. Due to the time zone difference, California Saturday night was New York's Sunday morning. The call rang for a while and it was picked up. Brother Patrick, Alice shouted into the tablet. Cherry, Patrick greeted from the dining table. Have you eaten breakfast? No, we're about to have dinner. That's weird. Did you not eat your dinner yesterday? Patrick asked as he frowned. My daddy's making dinner right now. Oh. By the way, is the prince gone? On the screen, she said, Hi, Patrick. Hello, Auntie Megan. Are you having breakfast? Is your mother there? Yeah. Can I talk to her? Okay. Patrick handed the pad to her mother. Mom, Auntie Megan wants to talk to you. Jenna took the pad and greeted Megan. Megan asked, Sister, Patrick told us you were not feeling well last time. How is it now? Just so-so. The doctor had no better options. He already talked to me when he came back last time. We are planning to go to California again and visit your grandfather soon. That's great. Do let me know beforehand. You can come during the vacation and bring Patrick here to stay for a while. Yeah, sure. How have you been? Are you giving birth soon? Almost there. It's been over seven months. Almost eight months now. Awesome. You will have a family of five soon. They only chatted for a short while, and the pad was taken over by the two kids again. Patrick was very excited and called. Cherry, did you hear that? My mom said they will take me to California again. When can we meet again then? Great. I'll wait for you. They chatted for a while longer and had to stop when Patrick left for school. Then Megan called Olivia. She picked up quickly. It seemed that Olivia had put on some weight since they'd left. She had lost quite some weight when Kevin died. Now she was finally putting some on. So it seemed that James had been taking good care of her and the baby. Hi, say hello to your Auntie Orange. Auntie Orange, how are you? I miss you so much. Cherry, my sweetheart. Auntie misses you too. When are you coming back to California to see your little brother here? Alice searched on the screen and asked, Auntie Orange, can you show me my baby brother right now? I can't wait to see him. Sure, let me show you. Olivia faced the camera towards the crib. They saw little Edward playing happily with his own chubby hands. Wow, so adorable. How I wish I could kiss him. Alice found the baby extremely cute and kissed him on the screen. Little Edward was almost six months old now. How time flew. Olivia smiled. Cherry, if your mommy gives birth to little brothers, will you still love little Edward? Of course, Alice replied. I'll treat all of them as my little brothers. I'll read them stories and help them shower. The adult smiled at how pure the little girl's thought was. After talking for a few minutes, Edward began to cry. Hurry up and check what's going on with him. We'll talk next time. Alice said goodbye, Megan said. Bye-bye, Auntie Orange. Bye-bye, Cherry. Megan took her daughter back downstairs after they hung up the call. Connor had just finished preparing dinner. They had a peaceful dinner together. Connor left the dishes to the servant while he spent time with his family. Perhaps because they had been out the whole day, Alice fell asleep before Connor could finish the third bedtime story. Connor and Megan crept out of Alice's room and went back to their own. Megan sat down on the bed and said, 
Hey, it's still early. Should we do something? No, we can't. The doctor said that we shouldn't do that right now, Connor scolded. Even though Megan was being scolded, she couldn't help but laugh. What are you laughing at? Connor said with a puzzled face. I'm laughing at you. I just said that we should do something, but I didn't say that we should do that. What were you thinking? Megan laughed as she lay down on the bed. Megan was the one who had dirty thoughts all the time, but she found it hilarious when it was Connor's turn. Connor walked over to Megan with an awkward face and laid down next to her. You're getting naughtier, Connor scolded as he touched her face. Megan grabbed his hand and looked at him affectionately. Being attracted by Megan's stare, Connor finally gave in and kissed her, but it was just a light kiss as he let go after a few seconds. So what did you want to do? Connor asked. It's been quite some time since we last partied up, right? Do you want to play? Yes, just for a while. Pretty please? Megan asked with a cute face. Ever since she gotten pregnant, Connor has been limiting her time with electronic devices. That was why she had to get his green light before logging on to games. All right, just for a while. Yay, you're the best. Megan kissed Connor on his cheek and went to fetch her tablet. Her movement was so swift that others would not have believed she was eight months pregnant. Hey, slow down. I know. Megan found their tablets and logged into their accounts. They had already invited the other players in the group chat before logging in. Adam, Woody, and Layla all replied that they were going to join. They logged into the Royal Alliance at almost the same time. The whole server nearly erupted when all top five players logged in together. They got ready for a team fight and found some new faces on their team. King. Who is this undefeated? Last Terminator. No idea. A newcomer? Hustle Knight. It's so obvious. Can't you see? It's our invincible Mr. President. Last Terminator. Oh no, I'm panicking. Is the President on our team? OMG. Adam could not believe that Megan and Connor even got the President of California on their team. King. I thought so, but who is this Allison? Hustle Knight. It's Rose. She's new. Let's take good care of her. Megan had just gotten Rose on the team. She ranked fairly high, too, and had married in the game. Rose greeted everyone, and they all welcomed her. Woody tried to look at Rose's profile and saw the name Morrison under her spouse column. He burst into wild laughter. Morrison was Toby's username. How interesting. They were not even getting engaged in the real world, but already a couple in the game. That was funny. But Woody chose not to tell them, so they would not feel awkward playing together. Toby was called into the game last minute. When he logged in, he had already missed the introduction of Rose. He had no idea that Allison was Rose. They teamed up and started the game. Toby went with his wife in the game, taking her to kill the monsters and fulfill their assignments. They were perfect partners in the game. They chatted frequently, but never mentioned any personal information. Toby talked more in the game and was more patient. He seemed to be a kinder person in the virtual world. He told her a lot and treated her as a true friend. Rose's character in the game was also very straightforward. She did not have many concerns and could simply be herself. They had no idea about each other's real identities, otherwise they could have never played so well together. After an hour or so, Connor claimed that the time was up and had his wife logged out. Megan's pad was taken away. She felt reluctant to stop. I wish we could play a little while longer. How brilliant we were just now. It's your bedtime now. Connor turned off the light right away and all was dark. Megan moved towards him and laid against him on his arm. Connor slightly turned to her and stroked her on her belly. Are they asleep? No way. They are more excited than I am, still playing. Connor held his breath and tried to feel the babies. They were indeed kicking inside. He laughed. I can feel them kicking. They must be naughty kids. Yeah, I think so too. Connor patted her gently on her belly and said, Hey you guys, go to sleep now. Otherwise, Daddy will spank you. It seemed to have worked. The two babies gradually stopped kicking. Would you actually punish them if they became naughty in the future? Megan laughed at Connor. She knew from how he took care of Alice that he would never be a strict father. 
Megan was already prepared to be a strict parent while Connor would be the nice one. Of course not. I would even cry if you lost one strand of your hair. There was no way I would punish a person that came out from your body. Connor's words were both gentle and seductive at the same time. Megan found Connor's face in the dark and kissed his cheek. Let's sleep. Good night. Good night, my love. Connor also turned around and kissed her back. Connor would stay at home for the next few days whenever he had the time. He hoped that he could be met by Megan's side so that he could take care of her. Seven days passed, and it was the day for Toby and Rose's own wedding. The Wilson family changed into more formal attire and attended the wedding dinner. So, this is what we'll do. I'll take her daughter to Rose's wedding while you attend Toby's wedding, Megan suggested. She couldn't help but feel that their wedding date was annoying. Okay, Connor agreed. The Royal Hotel was extraordinarily crowded. A couple of the most prominent families in California were holding their wedding at the hotel and it was an honor to them. Not only were Toby and Rose's weddings on the same date and hotel, they were also being held on the same floor. When Rose reached the hotel in her white wedding dress, Kelly had also just arrived. When Rose saw Kelly, she could not hide her surprise as Kelly had been her best friend during college. She would have never expected that Toby would be engaged to her. Kelly had always been proud of her status and would always show it. She was the complete opposite of Rose. Kelly was more of a lady filled with pride while Rose was a lady that was sweet and cute. Rose was not in contact with Kelly because the latter had left to study abroad. Kelly came back to California just for the wedding. Rose, it's really you, Kelly greeted when she noticed Rose. When I heard that the Clareton family was going to hold a wedding today, I was shocked. I was also surprised when I saw you coming through that door. When did you come back? Just a few days ago. I came back just for this, Kelly said. Oh, right. I heard that you're marrying that guy from the Stone family. Are you sure it's not a joke? It's not that nice of a person, you know. I know, but I don't have a choice. I'm not as lucky as you, Rose smiled awkwardly. I know, right? When I first saw Toby, I knew that he was the one. Kelly was very satisfied with the engagement. With Toby's position as the chief commander as well as him being very good looking, he met every single criterion of a perfect future husband. Rose felt so bitter. How she envied her. But she could only put on a smile and say congratulations. I wish you all the happiness. Thank you. I wish the same for you. With her family calling, Kelly left her for the other ballroom. After that, Toby arrived with his family. Seeing the girl in a white dress by the entrance, he walked directly towards her. But when the girl raised her head, he found out that it was the upset Rose. How come it's you? Toby was surprised. He was supposed to be engaged to Kelly, but why was it Rose instead? Congratulations, Mr. Toby. Rose was slightly shocked upon the sudden sight of Toby, but she managed to calm down and give her best wishes. While Toby was trying to figure out what was going on, his men reminded him, Master, you are in the wrong place. Our venue is over there. Hmm, this is awkward. Toby realized that he was in the wrong venue and misunderstood Rose, so he apologized and left for the other ballroom. Seeing him leaving, Rose forced herself to control her falling tears. In a short while, Kelly showed up with Toby at the entrance of the other ballroom. Kelly pointed at Rose from some distance and said, Toby, look, that's my college classmate Rose. Megan, are you all right? What a small world. We are getting engaged on the same day. Hmm, Toby answered emotionlessly. He took a glance at Rose and turned away immediately. Sadly, she's not as lucky. I have you, but she will be engaged to Troy, the notorious playboy. He hasn't even shown up yet. Who knows which girl he is hanging out with right now. Kelly was merely stating the facts, but she had no idea that what she said had changed something in Toby, too. Seeing the girl welcoming guests by herself on the other end, Toby couldn't help feel for her. Most guests had arrived. So had Megan and Connor with their daughter. They came to congratulate Toby first. Then Megan took her daughter to the Clareton family. 
the engagement ceremony was about to start. Toby and Kelly were escorted to the VIP room to get prepared. While they were waiting, Toby felt somewhat restless. He asked Kelly to wait for him while he went to the restroom. Coming out of the room, he saw the Stone family finally arriving. Troy wore sunglasses and was attended to by a group of guards, and he was still on the phone. Yeah, it's just a show. Marrying her is just adding another piece of decoration to the house. No big deal. Of course, you are my favorite. Sweetheart, stop it. Okay, I'll come right to you after the ceremony. I have to go now. Troy had barely finished the call before he arrived at the hall. Then he asked his men to wait outside and walked in by himself. For some reason, Toby felt enraged upon seeing him being so arrogant and overhearing his phone call. He was getting engaged, but he still talked to another woman like that. How could he possibly treat Rose so cold-heartedly? There was no way Toby would let a player like Troy marry Rose. He suddenly thought of Rose's pretty face, the way she cried, and the words that she told him. Toby's mind was in chaos, as he had no idea what was happening to him. A feeling of not wanting Rose to suffer appeared inside of him, and he was being absorbed into it. The door to the resting room opened, and Troy was the first to walk out, followed by Rose. Rose did not even look at Toby and walked past him. He stared at Rose's lonely figure, and pain could be felt in his heart. Toby, it's time. Let's go, Kelly said when she found him. She pulled his arm and dragged him back to the wedding. Toby sighed as he had to accept his fate, and so did Rose. They were both chess pieces in a game of fate. The guests who attended Rose and Troy's wedding were people of higher stature. The wedding proceeded smoothly until the host announced, Mr. Troy, please exchange your ring. Troy took the ring out but noticed Rose did not reach her hand out. What are you doing? Are you trying to embarrass me? Troy asked in a low voice. Troy was a man full of pride and he absolutely would not allow anything to happen during the wedding. Rose didn't say anything, but he could feel that Troy was warning her with a stare. Troy did not wait for Rose to answer and pulled her hand up, trying to force the ring on her finger. But before he could do so, the door was kicked open. The sound was so loud that everyone turned to look at the door, even Troy and Rose. Toby walked through the door and paced slowly towards Troy. Rose couldn't believe what she was seeing. She had a lot of questions, like why was Toby there when he should be at his own wedding? The guests were talking amongst themselves, not knowing what was happening. But when Megan realized it was Toby, she couldn't help but laugh. Toby walked straight towards the two be-wedded couple and pulled Rose's hand away from Troy. Without letting go of Rose, Toby turned and walked towards the door. Troy was still stunned by what had happened, as his hand with the ring in it was still in the air. Before he could even realize it, someone had come to kidnap his fiance, and it was a massive humiliation to him. Stop! What are you doing? Troy scolded, but the only answer he got was a hard punch from Toby. Troy fell to the ground and the ring was lost. When he got up again, Toby had already taken Rose away. They disappeared at the entrance of the hall. The guests were all shocked. They asked around, trying to figure out what had just happened. Was the bride just kidnapped? Sheldon and Rick were also confused. Since it was Toby who had taken Rose away, they had to turn to Megan for help. Uncle, auntie, don't worry. I'll go check on them. Megan reassured them and took her daughter out. Stepping out of the venue, Megan saw the chaos in the other ballroom. Connor got out and came to them. Megan asked, Do you have any idea what's going on? He ran away, Connor answered briefly. He got a hold of his wife and daughter and said, Come on, let's go. On their way back, Connor told Megan about what had happened at the engagement ceremony of Toby and Kelly. It turned out that Toby made a bold move at the very last moment. He put down the ring and said, I'm sorry. And then he ran out of the room. Despite Kelly's calls, he never turned back. Connor heard from his wife that Toby went to Troy and Rose's engagement ceremony after that and took Rose away. Finally realizing what had happened, Megan slapped her thigh and complained, What has he done? 
If only the eldest brother could have followed his heart earlier. How could this have happened? Now he took Rose away. How should the four families deal with it? What he did today has offended both the Lynn and Mo families. Perhaps the families would not forgive him either for taking Rose away like that. Megan could not help blaming her eldest brother. He had always been a sedate man. No one would have expected him to act so ridiculously on such an important occasion. Megan worried about what they would be faced with next. Don't worry too much. Sometimes people can only see their hearts at the very last moment. Now that they are running away together, it might not be a bad thing. Let's wait and see. What else can we do? They drove home. Having had nothing at the engagement ceremony, they had to call their parents for dinner at the Moon Castle. When Toby took Rose out of the ballroom, he dragged her out of the hotel and got her into his car. Then he thundered away. He drove so fast that Rose almost threw up. Rose did not dare to open her eyes until he stopped. She looked pale, and her heart kept beating violently. She felt very bad. Toby finally stopped after driving crazily for dozens of miles, and then realized that the girl was not feeling well. Recalling that she had heart disease, Toby was scared and asked, "'Miss Clareton, are you okay?' It took Rose quite a while to get her heart calmed down and re-catch her breath. Turning to Toby, she was filled with complicated feelings. Instead of saying anything, she just stared at him. The color had drained from her face, but her eyes were as clear as ever. She just stared at him quietly. However, he seemed to have heard her silent questioning. She was asking why he had done that today. I'm really sorry, Toby apologized. Toby had grabbed Rose and ran at the wedding without thinking of what would happen after that. But when he finally calmed down and his thoughts became clear, he realized he might have caused her harm that might be beyond repair. But he couldn't do anything else. All he could do was apologize for his mistake. So you took me all the way out here without my consent. Also, you could apologize? Rose asked as she forced a smile with her trembling lips. I'm sorry. Is that all you can say? Why did you do that? I just don't want to see you throw everything away. Troy is not the right choice. Mr. Toby, Rose scolded before Toby could even finish his sentence. Don't you think you went out of line? You ruined my marriage, and now you're saying that you don't want me to throw everything away? Who do you think you are? If Troy is not the right choice, then who is? Rose wanted an answer. She had already given up on Toby entirely because they were both engaged to other people. But he suddenly ran into her wedding and ruined everything. She wanted to know why he did that. She wanted to know why he would butt in if she was not important to him. I did that because of Megan. Do you really want to marry a man who has other girlfriends when he's about to get married? You're just decoration to him. Tears rolled down Rose's face as she heard the things that she didn't want to listen to the most. She couldn't help but find his reason very ironic. Rose turned to look outside the window. So what if he has other girlfriends? That's my choice. What does that have to do with you? Who are you to tell me what to do? Do you even know what other people would think of us after what you did? Are you going to take responsibility after this? Toby could not answer her question. It was the first time in his life that he had ever done something based on his impulses. Toby didn't know what to do. How much he wished that Megan was there with him so that he could ask for her help. His silence only broke Rose's heart even further. She wiped her tears and turned to face Toby. I thought we would live our own lives and never see each other again, but you've ruined that. You've abandoned Kelly and I've abandoned Troy. Everyone will think that we've eloped. Let me ask you this again. Did you do that just because you love me? Rose mustered all her courage and asked him the question. She really wanted to know how he felt about her. If he really liked her, she was willing to give up Troy and be with him, even if it meant being criticized by others, including her best friend. She wouldn't mind the consequences. All she needed was a definitive answer. 
but the question stunned Toby. She asked it so straightforward. However, he didn't have an answer. He had never liked anyone, not to mention love, because he had no idea what love felt like. Being asked why he had taken her away, he felt confused too. He didn't know how to answer. Rose waited with hope, but the longer she waited, the more heartbroken and disappointed she got. The man next to her seems like an ice statue, not giving any response. But his lack of response was probably the clearest answer. Rose felt overwhelmingly painful and burst into tears. She wanted to leave here right away and cry over it with no one else's presence. She opened the door, held her broken heart, and walked towards where they had come from. Seeing her getting out crying, Toby came back to himself and watched her sad figure stepping further and further away. He got out of the car too, but standing there, he didn't know what to do. Should he go after her or let her go? Ugh. Toby sighed and lowered his head while he pounded on the car, but when he raised his head again, he saw that Rose had suddenly stopped and fallen onto the ground. Did she pass out? Toby felt a grip on his heart and darted over to her without any hesitation. Miss Clareton, Miss Clareton. Lifting up the unconscious girl, Toby felt like his heart was breaking again. But why? He could not sit there watching her getting engaged to a ridiculous man. He felt it too when she felt sad. Seeing her passing out, he became heartbroken. Was that because he had a crush on her? The two engagement ceremonies were ruined by what Toby had done. It went onto the headline of every California newspaper. During his engagement ceremony with Kelly, Toby ran and took away Rose from her engagement ceremony with Troy. Were they rematching or was there a mistake? People all wondered what had happened. And Toby made an unforgettable debut in front of the California people. The newly appointed chief commander had just made his first achievement, running away with the daughter of the state secretary. How ridiculous. The most outraged one was Troy. His bride was taken away and he was punched in the face. It was most humiliating. He would never let him walk away from it. Not even he was the chief commander. There would be payback sooner or later. Kelly was also hurt. Being rejected in public was truly unbearable. When she heard that Toby left her and took Rose away, she felt even more enraged. How dare you, Rose? Toby took Rose away, so there must have been something between them. How could Rose keep it a secret from her? She should have investigated him beforehand. If she knew he had other girlfriends, she would have never put herself into such an awkward situation. How could she only be a joke for the people of California? Their parents were also annoyed. They should have been celebrating a decent engagement ceremony, but it turned out to be a farce. That's it for today, guys. If you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening.